Hi guys, it's Baldrick here and in today's episode I'll be going over the parts required to build a console killing PC for a budget price of $715 and this includes the OS. And by the way guys, keep in mind this is Australian dollars so if you live in Australia, this video is slightly catered towards you guys because that's where I'm from so you may as well make it there. Anyway, the first part we're going to be going over is the OS. I know it's not a part, but it's definitely a very big expense in actually building the PC. It costs you $112 from the retailer called MSY, and that's in basically every state in Australia. So you can definitely pick it up there for $112, although I do recommend trying to get it for a bit cheaper because that is a bit of a ripoff, but I'm going to have to leave it at that because that's what it costs at where I'm getting all my parts from so it's a hundred and twelve dollars but I know you can sort of pirate it but don't do that guys just try and find it cheap for twenty dollars or something like that but it does cost a hundred and twelve Australian dollars so keep that in mind that's what's putting the price up that extra hundred dollars so anyway now we're on to the actual computer components now so the CPU is the Intel Pentium 3440 it retails for 90 Australian dollars and it is a pretty good CPU it is 3.3 gigahertz and it is a dual core CPU so it's definitely enough for budget gaming and it's perfect for the graphics card I'm gonna pick the reason I picked this CPU over the overclockable Pentium is because you're not really going to get that much more gaming performance if you overclock. You might get like a few more frames per second in your game, but it's really not worth it because I couldn't even find it. So I'm just putting this one in. It's good enough, guys. You can't really complain about this for a budget gaming PC. Anyway, now on to the graphics card. The graphics card I have picked is the 750 Ti from Gainwood. It costs you... I'm pretty sure 115 no $160 so it's pretty cheap for a graphics card and it definitely gives you good price for performance and even better you don't even have to plug in any power connectors into it or any six pins or four pins you just plug it into your motherboard graphics card slot and you're done it's easy as that install your drivers and you're ready to go this card I Picked because it runs Battlefield 4 at high setting 60 FPS. I know that because I've seen a lot of benchmarks with similar Pentiums, and it definitely on most games at 1080p will give you 60 FPS as long as you're not like putting the settings to ultra or anything like that. At medium to high settings, this card excels and it's perfect for 1080p gaming and on a budget and this is definitely a console killer because the consoles are struggling to hit 1080p as this is hitting it and hitting it hard and getting a good 60 fps now we are on to the motherboard the motherboard i've picked is the asus h97 uh, ME. It retails for 115 Australian dollars. It features a few PCI free slots, so that's perfect for the Wi-Fi card and anything else you decide to put in your computer at a later date. And it's perfect for your graphics card, perfect for your CPU because it's compatible, and it f features enough RAM slots for the RAM I'm putting in, which is just going to be one stick. Now we are on to the actual RAM. So the RAM I've picked is 8 gigabyte single 1333 Patriot S RAM. So this RAM is perfect for gaming and it's definitely a sort of bargain. It costs you $83. I know it's 1333 but for one stick it's perfect for upgradability in the future and at the components we've picked, it's not really going to give you much of a boost getting 1600 DDR3 RAM. So now we are onto the case because the case comes with a power supply. So the case we've picked is the Cooler Master Elite 342 with a 420 watt power supply. This can feature a micro ADX motherboard, and that is what we have picked. So it's perfect. The 420 watt power supply is more than enough for powering these 
sort of lower end components because they don't require much power at all. And the Elite looks decent and it's one of the cheapest cases I could find that's actually okay. So I picked it. It doesn't look too bad either. You're not going to get that high end gaming PC look but it's definitely not going to overheat your components or anything like that because it's got some fan intakes on the side. Now we are on to the hard drive. The hard drive I've picked is the Seagate Barracuda 500GB variant. So it's enough for your games, multimedia, movies, I don't know, whatever you want to chuck on it, it's probably going to be able to handle it. And if it ever gets full, since you know how to build your PC, you just add an extra 500GB and you're done. Put them in RAID, do whatever you want, but yeah. Now we are on to the Wi-Fi card. So the Wi-Fi card is the Edimax EW7722 PND. So it's a PCI Wi-Fi card. It's going to give you decent speeds. Obviously, it's perfect for gaming. It's nothing wrong with it. It goes right into your motherboard and that's about it. It's not too important. Apart from, yeah, it is important, but like you can get cheap ones if you really want but you don't want to skimp out on your Wi-Fi card because I know I've had pretty shit Wi-Fi cards in the past and you definitely want good ones. Also we've got the DVD player and that is to install Windows and that will cost you $18 and so far I didn't save the price of the Wi-Fi card that turned out to be 32 Australian dollars. So that's it, you don't have to get the DVD play if you don't want to, if you know how to install Windows via USB, so be it and save you $18. So that's it for all the components on this PC. It should definitely e easily be able to beat any console, especially the PS4. The PS4 retails for $548, and this retails for $715, and you can probably get it down to the 640 price depending on how much you get your OS for but it's definitely way better performance than a PS4 or Xbox One for a bit more money but you're paying for the performance that you're not getting in the console and you also get future upgradeability you can upgrade whatever you want in the future so I highly recommend if you're gonna upgrade the graphics card upgrade your CPU as well because you don't want to be getting any bottlenecks with your high-end graphics cards and also remember to upgrade that power supply as well if you're putting in any high-end graphics cards in the future so that's really all I've got to say even if you're putting in a high-end CPU I would recommend upgrading the power supply as well just to a 550 watt or something like that because you definitely don't want to skimp out on your power supply when you're putting uh, power hungry components in it whereas these components they're not really too fast on what power supply you have so that's why I really like this PC it's just really good that we can get PCs these this cheap now. Next guide I'll probably try and do a budget AMD build because AMD has some really nice budget cards and the reason I'm using Nvidia in this build is because it gives you a lot of awesome features with GeForce Experience. It allows you to record in 1080p at 50 megabytes per second. That's what I recorded this Battlefield 4 in and it just looks great so it's really cool that you can do this with your 750ti with about six percent performance dip so you may want to play on medium or something like that so that's it for this video i would really appreciate it if you left a like or a comment because i really did work hard on making this video so if you could tell me how i could improve my build guides or if you want to see more in the future or if you really don't like them at all because you don't care about PC gaming. And I would really also appreciate it if you guys have any suggestions for the next PC build. I know I'm going to be doing AMD, but maybe the one after that. So I really hope you enjoyed this, guys. Remember to click that subscribe button if you haven't done already. See ya!